Hello dear colleagues, I would like to present the case of coronary artery disease for review purposes. A male patient, 75 years old, smoker with a history of hypertension and intermittent claudication since two years, came to my office because he was concerned about his hypertension. He was on treatment with atenolol 25 mg per day aspirin 100 mg per day, nifedipine 30 mg one time a day, and a combination of hydrochlorothiazide 50 mg and amyloride 5 mg uh, half a tablet per day. While he was waiting at the office, he complained of a pressing pain on the central area of the chest. Physical examination revealed the blood pressure of 165 to 85 and the systolic murmur heard louder parasternally at the second right intercostal space. The first and second head sound were both clearly heard. This indicates that although there is a murmur of aortic, suggestive of aortic valve stenosis, the aortic stenosis probably is not severe since in severe aortic stenosis the intensity of the second heart sound is very diminished or it is often inaudible and uh, the murmur uh, has a larger duration in the, this case. Uh, the ECG of the patient showed sinus rhythm and ST segment elevation during the pain in leads V1 to V4. The ECG picture is highly suggestive of an acute ST elevation myocardial infarction. I gave him half of a 500 mg aspirin tablet to chew and the tablet of isosorbite denitrate 5 mg sublingually established an intravenous line and called the emergency medical services so that the patient could be quickly transferred to the hospital as an acute coronary syndrome. Within five minutes from the administration of sublingual nitrate, the pain stopped and this was the ECG. Note that the ST segment elevation has subsided, it is no longer present. Since the ST elevation was transient and responded promptly to the administration of a short-acting nitrate, there was a suspicion for coronary artery spasm, a condition also known as Prince Metal's angina. And unlike typical angina, which is often triggered by exertion or emotional stress, Prince Metal's angina almost always occurs at rest, usually between midnight and morning. In some cases, ST segment elevation can be preceded by peaked and tall T waves. Coronary arterial spasm due to a transient localized contraction of the arterial muscular wall can occur not only in arteries without pre-existing stenosis, but also in arteries with a significant atherosclerotic narrowing. Critical coronary artery stenosis are found in about half of the patients with coronary arterial spasm. Drugs that relieve the arterial spasm are nitrates. Another option here uh, could be the administration of nitroglycerin spray sublingually uh, 0.4 to 0.8 mg and also calcium channel blockers are effective. Although the pain had subsided, the patient was transferred to the hospital. In the hospital, the patient received treatment with aspirin, clopidogrel, low molecular weight heparin, transdermal nitroglycerin, diltiazem and the statin. This is his echo, parasternal three chamber view. Do you see any abnormality? There is an akinetic basal to mid-posterior wall 
which raises a suspicion of the presence of a previous myocardial infarction in the territory of the left circumflex coronary artery, the LCX. The septum has a good contractile function. What do you see in the apical four chamber view? There is a hypokinesis of the basal lateral wall, another wall supplied by the LCX, the left circumflex coronary artery, and this also supports the suggestion of a previous myocardial infarction in this arterial territory. The overall global left ventricular contractile function is good. The two-chamber view shows a good contractile function of the inferior and the anterior wall. Another important question is which artery was responsible for the episode of chest pain that brought the patient to the hospital at present? The answer is provided by the patient's ECG. The transient ST segment elevation was in the anterior precordial leads, V1 to V4. So the artery responsible was the left anterior descending coronary artery, the LAD. The echo did not show wall motion abnormalities in the left, uh, left anterior descending territory because it was performed after the end of the brief episode of ischemia. If we had an echocardiogram during the ischemic episode, Probably we would also see wall motion abnormalities in the myocardial territory supplied by the left anterior descending. Now let's discuss the patient's coronary angiography. For review purposes, let us remember that in coronary angiography the source of the X-rays, the source of the X-rays is under the patient and the image intensifier which receives the X-rays is directly above the patient. The image intensifier can be described as the position of an observer looking at the, at the heart. In RAO views, in right anterior oblique views, the image intensifier is on the right side of the patient. In LAO views, left anterior oblique views, the image intensifier is on the left side of the patient. And, and in the AP view, the anterior posterior view, the image intensifier is directly over the patient with the beam traveling perpendicularly from back to front. In caudal views, the image intensifier is tilted towards the feet of the patient and in cranial views towards the head of the patient. So in caudal views, the, the image intensifier is tilted towards the feet of the patient and in cranial views towards the head of the patient the degrees of the angle that the image intensifier forms with the vertical line to the right or to the left in RAO and LAO views respectively characterize the view. For example, RAO 60 degrees view. Also, the degrees of the angle between the image intensifier and the vertical axis at the cranial or caudal direction are mentioned. This is a 35 degrees right anterior oblique RAO view with 20 degrees caudal angulation. In this view, the LAD is seen at the upper right part of the image and the left circumflex LCX at the lower and left part of the image. Do you see any abnormality? There is a significant stenosis at the middle part of the LAD of the left uh, anterior descending coronary artery and at the proximal part of the left circumflex LCX coronary artery. The symbols in the image show the, the symbol S in the image 
shows the position of the arterial narrowing. Here is an anterior posterior view, an AP view, anterior posterior view, with 25 degrees caudal angulation. This is a good view to see the left main coronary artery, which has no stenosis in this patient. The significant stenosis of the left circumflex is also seen. Here is a RAO cranial view. It shows well the stenosis at the middle of the left anterior descending LAD artery, which is marked with the red arrow. The stenosis at the middle of the LAD is marked with the red arrow. This is a LAO cranial view in LAO left anterior oblique views. The left anterior descending coronary artery is on the left side of the image and the left circumflex coronary artery on the right side. What do the arrows show? The red arrow shows the position of the lesion of the left anterior descending LAD and the yellow arrow shows the position of the lesion of the left circumflex coronary artery LCX. Here is the left lateral view which can also be described as a 90 degrees LAO view. The arrows show the position of the stenotic lesions at the coronary arteries. The LAO, the left anterior oblique caudal, LAO caudal view of the right coronary artery showed the 50% diameter stenosis of the mid portion of the right coronary artery. This is probably not a hemodynamically significant lesion. It is not a significant lesion. The patient was managed with angioplasty and stenting of the left arterial descending lesion, which, as I have already mentioned, was considered responsible for his symptoms. At the last follow-up visit, two years after the percutaneous coronary intervention, he was doing well on treatment with aspirin 100 mg per day, nifedipine prolonged release tablets 30 mg per day, transdermal nitroglycerin 10 mg per day, a combination of hydrochlorothiazide and amyloride half tablet per day for his hypertension and atorvastatin 20 mg per day. Thank you for watching. Greetings from Breveza Greece.